Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this video is part of my April 2021 Star Wheel Astrology and Healing Newsletter. It's section two, which is about the really important visionary energy of Neptune and Pisces now at this time. So basically the inspirational and visionary energy of Neptune is in mystical, if maverick, Purvabhadra Nakshatra, which is at the end of Vedic Aquarius. And the Neptune current is, as it has been for some time, considerable. Though, of course, we have to remember that Neptune does have another dark side, too, of delusion, illusion, drugs and confusion. But I so am grateful for the inspirational and visionary energy that has been coming from Neptune at this time. So what I'd ask is, please, don't get trapped in your busy life. All of us will do well to make time for vision work now and reception of intuition and inspiration. Pause at least once a day. Do vision development exercises. Do visionary journeys. I've been doing loads over this period. And incidentally, using them too to make my the novel I'm writing now, The Morrigan and the Dagda, so much more visionary powerful. Listen to your intuitions now. What are they? So Neptune was square the nodal axis in January of this year. And that gave a fated importance to the visions we could reach then. And Neptune continues as a very powerful vision source from April 22, when Neptune transits into the sign Vedic Pisces, though still in Purvabhadra Nakshatra. Just let's look a little bit more about Purvabhadra. It is a maverick energy nakshatra, often called headbanging even, can be my way or the highway. But at its highest, it's much more. The devata of Purvabhadra is the expression of death, destruction and the path to rebirth. He is Aja Akapada a form of Rudra, the god of storms and the thunder god, and therefore a form of Shiva, cleansing fire, the spiritual power of fire. But it's important to remember that more anciently still, Purvabhadra is also associated with the fire dragon, Ajikapa, and his brother, the water dragon, Ahyabhundra. These two dragons are seen as brothers, seen as sons of Vishvakarma, the heavenly architect. Most importantly, for the understanding of this Neptune transit from which we all can benefit, they are the serpent path to transcendence. They are rebirth through the destructive storm. They're more ancient than the Aryan influenced Vedic deities. The Vedic deities are of course wonderful faces of the divine and so beneficially can be contacted at such. But we have to remember that there are more ancient roots to the Dravidian bedrock on which the Vedic culture 
was imposed by the Aryan invasions. And the, the serpent path is shamanic and understands the connection between shadow and light. It is in that ancient powerful setting that Neptune is now sending his vibrations to us. Now you have to remember that this Neptune activation I'm talking of is also augmented by the sun's transit through Pisces from April, sorry, from March the 14th to April the 13th. And with Mercury and Venus and Chiron, the wounded healer, all transiting in Pisces too. So the dates are in the associated blog to go with this video. Sun in Pisces, March the 14th to April the 13th. Venus in Pisces, March the 16th to April the 9th. Mercury in Pisces, March the 31st to April the 16th. And Chiron transits Pisces all month. So what is the energy of Pisces? Well, Pisces is intuitive, sensitive, gentle and kind. Sympathetic, but lacking in confidence. So Venus is exalted in Pisces until Venus enters Aries on the 11th of April. But there are a bundle of problem issues for Venus at this time. See below. Now I've mentioned Sun, Venus, Mercury and Chiron. But we must be careful of the areas of life that these planets are characters for or indicators for. For example, and importantly, Venus is the character for relationships. So be careful and be nurturing of love at this time of Venus combustion. Venus is also about money. Be careful. Now, a further reason to be careful at this time is that Sun and Venus are transiting Revati Nakshatra. Revati is the 27th and final Nakshatra in the supremely wonderful 27 sign lunar zodiac. And Revati is ruled by Mercury. And what's the situation with Mercury now? Well, Mercury is transiting Pisces until April the 16th. And so Mercury is debilitated. So that affects Sun and Venus who are transiting through Mercury's nakshatra, Revati. So sincerely, we should monitor our thoughts now and watch out especially for the overcritical mindset but of course, Revity is also very spiritual at his highest, the shepherd who leads souls to God. So Mercury is in his debilitation sign of Pisces at the start of April, as well as being affected by sun transiting in Pisces. I must say the truth is, I welcome the intuitive sendings of Mercury when he's in Pisces, but I always breathe a sigh of relief when he leaves Pisces and communication and conceptual thinking and IT get clearer and easier again. So when Mercury is in his debilitation sign of Pisces, Gemini and Virgo people won't have such an easy time because Gemini and Virgo are ruled by Mercury. Now Virgo will have the tougher time because Virgo is seventh from the debilitated Mercury transit through Pisces. And this can have a difficult effect in relationship. 
seventh house. In fact, debilitated Mercury will affect Sun and Venus negatively. So we need to be very careful of speech and communications in the earlier part, half of April. When Mercury enters Aries, however, Mercury is in Aries from the April the 16th to April the 30th, ideas and communications will take on new speed. Thank goodness. Now Chiron transits Pisces too. And the influential full moon just before the start of April had Sun, Chiron and Venus, Sun, Chiron and Venus, all closely conjunct around 15 Pisces. See my important separate blog and video post on the April lunations, which includes analysis of the end of March full moon, which has such influence in the first half of April. It's really important. Um, check out what house Aquarius is in your Vedic birth chart for extra guidance as to the life area where Neptune's transit in Aquarius and in Purva Bhadra will have effect. What house is it? That will receive the main effect. Also, check out what house Pisces is in your Vedic birth chart. Because that area of life will receive the big effect of Sun, Mercury, Venus and Chiron transits now. Now, if you go to my 2021 page on my Star Wheel Astrology website, you'll see there's wonderful... Um, go-to pages from that, all about planets in houses, planets in signs, all about the nakshatras, how to evaluate retrogrades, details of Saturn transits. And of course you can have a reading from me, you can go to the buy page on my Star Wheel Astrology website. And just to add to this, Regarding the planets in Pisces, it's important to remember that at the end of Pisces, the last couple of degrees of Pisces and the first couple of degrees of Aries, is the Gandanta zone. Gandanta zones are the transition points from water sign to fire sign. So from Pisces to Aries, Cancer to Leo, Scorpio to Sagittarius. And indeed, it was finding out about the Gandanta zones, which are revealed by the use of the sidereal zodiac, not the tropical zodiac, and Vedic astrology, converted me to study Vedic astrology. I'd studied Western astrology before that. But I found out about the meaning of moon in the Gandanta. My moon's at um, 29.56 degrees Pisces. And the meaning of that said in one sentence, my life destiny. And I thought, my goodness, if Vedic astrology has this in it, whereas Western astrology knows nothing of it, I must study Vedic astrology. And of course, there are so many more unique gems to Vedic astrology. That's not to wipe out or rule out Western astrology. We need that too. And, you know, I get wonders from psychodynamic Western astrology. So, as these planets that are in Pisces transit the Gandanta at the end of Pisces and the beginning of Aries, ex expect connection to the vastness, vaster inspiration and vision and deity connection. But also, of course, be aware it can be a time, for example, of turbulence and storms because it's the time of the immaterial and the breakdown of this physical world where we see its ultimate unreality with the divine purpose of penetrating further into the God realm beyond. Anyway, things get better for Venus when Venus moves out of combust with the sun on April the 18th. However, do note 
that when Venus goes on into Aries, the Aries energy is not particularly suitable to the nature of Venus, so still cherish love and beauty. Now a special note on the Sun here in Pisces. This Pisces activation, coupled with the Neptune um, transit through Purvabhadra in Vedic Aquarius, is wonderful, as I'm saying, for intuition and vision and inspirational connection and vision journeys. But Sun in Pisces becomes unconfident and unfocused and gives away too much of the self to others. So be aware, you know, look at your behaviours and relationships. Is that affecting you? But when Sun enters Aries, April the 13th, Sun becomes exalted. This will be such a good Sun energy for us to connect to and shine with. It's a new energy start in the middle of this month. So with Venus exalted in Pisces, but also Combust and Gandanta at times, do look out for and indeed capitalise upon a weird trip of riding two horses in the area of relationships. Really support your relationships. Don't be reactive. Make love connections. Be very aware, do relationship work. And a final point about Neptune in Purvabhadra and the Pisces activation is that Pisces also represents endings. So be on the lookout for things ending and transforming in your life. Be aware of that possibility handle it in the right way. So wishing you a wonderful use of the visionary activation now that goes on and on due to Neptune in Porvabhadra and Neptune moving next April into Pisces. Thank you.